Hello everyone. It finally stopped raining, uh, but the humidity is still pretty bad. Um, but it's given us a slight window to be able to use a new outdoor space um, that we're not quite done with but it's just done enough to where we can start using it. So we wanted to give our rocket stove a dedicated place in our yard uh, with a little eating area just so we can have somewhere where we can use this hopefully more than what we were able to before. And that means we're gonna be able to start looking at a lot of our cookbooks that require, you know, skillets and outdoor cooking and grilling and that kind of thing and really do a good review on them. Now, I don't know how this is gonna go because I've never made a frittata um, outdoors on a rocket stove before, so we're gonna keep our fingers crossed. The ingredients look really good. So hopefully we'll be able to get it together um, to where it'll taste as good as it looks. So. I will also be doing a review into this. I think you're gonna like this cookbook. It's pretty cool. And I hope that you're gonna like the dish we're gonna make. So let's go ahead and get started. And here's our recipe. It certainly sounds really good, um, but there's a couple things we need to go get. This parsley and thyme, which is going to let us use this new little gadget I picked up. We'll see if that can hold its own and actually do what it's supposed to. But first, let's go get our herbs. And here we are in what's basically become an herb and flower garden. You just saw my echinacea, which is like really beautiful this year, probably because of all the rain. I've got my parsley right here. And since we need a half a cup, I'm going to go ahead and pick from all three of my plants, um, just so I'm not taking too much from any one of them. I've also got a couple different kinds, so that'll be nice. So I've got some thyme right here. Let's go ahead and get right in the middle right there. Now we'll go inside, wash these up, and then we'll be ready to continue.
while we wait for the eggs to cook, let's go ahead and take a look at this little cookbook. You'll see I only paid about $8 uh, for this at a used bookstore. And when I saw it, you know how much I love my cast iron? <laughs> I really just wanted to try it. Um, and so I took a chance on it and I'm glad that I did because you have some really good recipes in here. Now, none of these recipes are what I would call groundbreaking or unusual. They're just good. They're just kind of your uh, favorite standbys that the whole family likes. A lot of these are tried and true flavor combinations and things that, you know, as I was looking through this, I really didn't see any one of them that I would be like, oh, I would never try that or I know I wouldn't like that. I think a lot of the desserts look really good. Um, where I think this cookbook kind of excels is the lunch and brunch section. There's just a lot of recipes in this chapter that just look so good. And if you're wanting something, you know, that you pretty much already know you're going to like, um, but you're wanting to mix up your breakfast a little bit, I think this would be a great chapter to turn to. There you go, just a cookbook that you might want to have on hand just when you want to pull that iron skillet out and pick something that you just know you're going to like that's going to be a family favorite. So there you go, and now let's go check on those eggs and see if they're finally done. All right, we're almost done, but the recipe did say that you may need to broil the top just to finish off and make sure you've cooked all the egg. And even with the lid, I think that's what we're gonna have to do. So I'm going to broil this just for a couple minutes in the oven, and then we're gonna bring it back outside. And here's the big reveal. Oh, that is perfect. We had that in a broiler just for a couple minutes to set that egg, and now we're ready to try it. All right, finally ready to try this. This looks so good. I cannot wait. Mm -hmm. Ready? Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Can you get a better <laughs> frittata? I don't know. I was worried it was going to be like too Ugh. cooked on the bottom or something but it's perfect like i, I actually like it you know just like yes and i that mean crispiness kind of a little bit on the one that side it, oh yeah it is awesome and you know what you can make this on your stove uh and it's gonna be really good but adding that smoky flavor mm -hmm. from the rocket stove that really elevated this to top notch the herbs are great on it. The ham is perfectly savory. The tomatoes adds that really great umami flavor to it. This is just a great breakfast or brunch. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. That is so good. And as for this cookbook, I would say, you know, if you can find this on eBay or wherever, I would definitely give this a pick up, especially after trying this. Mm -hmm. Because this recipe, if it speaks for the rest of them, you're going to have an awesome cookbook that you can just pull out and make some fairly quick to put together. Because yeah. this one was um, family favorites that just taste good. So yeah, all in all, I'm really happy that I picked this up for just $8. So there you go, our first little foray into cooking with the rocket stove in its brand new place of elevation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're gonna have more to come in the next couple weeks. I have some other cookbooks that are specially geared towards outdoor cooking. So I really wanna get those out. Hopefully our weather uh, we'll hold out yeah. and give us a chance to do that. Um, but for now, thanks for watching this one. I really hope you try this for breakfast. You are going to be so happy you did. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Have a great day. Bye. And if you like historical cooking and unusual cookbooks, here's two more videos you might enjoy.
and make sure to like and subscribe for more foodie adventures.